Well, hello everybody. It's been a while since I've put out a video and we're having some gorgeous weather here. It's uh, February 16th, about 45 degrees here. This is Wolf Lake behind me. Uh, gorgeous weather. It's unusual that it's clear and it's warm at the same time. So I thought I'd get out, play a little bit with the camera and, and uh, I'm hoping to get the drone out if it doesn't uh, if it doesn't get too windy here. So on this channel, we we hope you get encouraged by our successes, but even more importantly, we try to show you the failures too. And uh, it's our hope that you'll learn from the failures and and not just get encouraged by the successes that we have. The failures are definitely there. We've got a big failure to discuss in this video, and that is that. Uh, some of our land, a good bit of it, is becoming swamp, and it gets worse every year. And so stay tuned, and I'm going to discuss what we think is causing it and what we're doing about it. So we bought the property about seven years ago, and it was a little boggy, but nothing of concern. It, it's a fairly fairly level piece of land with a little bit of slope, so there, it does get some natural drainage. But uh, fast forward seven years, and we've noticed that some areas that we that we've cleared have become more and more boggy every year. We cleared an area about 75 feet by 150 feet to have some uh, parking area to maneuver trailers and with vehicles and container and storage and all that stuff and it in the first year it, it it got a little wet ankle deep water it went away halfway through the summer eventually it drains down uh, and every year it gets a little worse now it's at the point where it's in some places it gets knee deep and it sticks around for most of the summer one of the things I think that's contributing to that is when we cleared the the, the trees, it allowed the uh, sun to come in and melt the permafrost, or at least uh, melt uh, the permafrost part of the way down, because what we have, well, in this particular spot is, is frozen clay soil, and when it melts, the water kind of drains out of it, and it slumps, and it makes a depression, and that just makes more water pool up in there. The permafrost in our part of the state starts at about two feet down. If you dig two, I don't care if it's 90 degrees air temperature outside, you dig two feet down, it's frozen soil. And from what I've gathered, it uh, it's frozen all the way down to about 70 feet. At the same time, we have had long spells of heavy snows in the winter and heavy rains in the, in the summer. Climate change is a contributing factor there. It just causes these weather systems to just park on top of you for weeks. With, no matter where you live in the northern hemisphere, you're getting that, I'm sure. But we'll have... I, I've seen it rain every single day at our cabin for 10 straight weeks. Just almost non-stop, round the clock. Uh, and the same thing with snow in the wintertime. So all that water has to go somewhere, and our soil is not the greatest for, for, for perking and draining. Our property had never been cleared. It, it's virgin forest, it's very thick vegetation uh, down on the ground level. It's covered with moss, which is famous for its insulating qualities and its water holding qualities. The only time this property has been cleared that I know of is about 80 or 90 years ago. There was a regional forest fire that came through and, and looks like it took out most of the trees, but that's a lot of, uh, that's a lot of insulation on the ground, which keeps our ground frozen through the summer. So for humans to inhabit a spot, they have you have to make some changes to the property. You you have to clear some property and sometimes, you know, depending on what you're building, you've got to uh you've got to move some dirt. And we noticed that as we cleared that large area, we created a swamp and we've been combating it ever since. So number 1 is try to buy uh, land that does not have permafrost on it. That's, that's my best piece of advice to give you. 
sometimes it's not avoidable and sometimes it's not even totally detectable before you buy a piece of property. If you go to look at land, take a pair of post hole diggers and ask per for permission to dig a couple of few test holes around the place. If you go two feet down, three feet down maybe, uh, however far you can go with a post hole digger and you don't hit frozen soil, you're probably, you're probably okay. So there's three main uh, strategies you can use when you're dealing with these uh, drainage issues in the north. See where there's permafrost and method number one is to just try to keep it frozen. That's the simplest and easiest and cheapest way to go about it. Keep your structure small and uh, the idea is you basically cut the trees off at the ground level and then you take fabric that's called Tipar, there's other brand names of it, but it's a geotextile fabric that's made for laying down underneath a road base. So you buy this stuff in big rolls, comes about 12 foot rolls, 16 foot rolls, and uh, you roll that out and then you just have gravel brought in and build up a bed of gravel on it as thick as you can afford to get it. Two or three feet is uh, you know, you're you're pretty much in the game if you get two, two or three feet built up on top of that. That's just going to hopefully keep the ground frozen underneath your road base or your building pad. That's how we started. Uh, we, we cleared the trees for about a 600 foot circular driveway and we started rolling out the tie par fabric and bringing in gravel and slowly building it up. You have to top it up. You know, the gravel has a way of squishing down into the tundra, the moss. Once you've got it built up to the thickness you need it, you'll have to top it off every couple of years with, with maybe have three, four inches more gravel brought in and spread. So that's a no dig option and you want to keep your structures small. Everything you do needs to be on top of the ground, no digging, just play on the surface. That's all you're doing with that, uh, that, with that kind of a, of a base. If you'll notice, that is, if you've ever seen the, the footage that was shot by Dick Prinicky back in the 60s where he hand built his own cabin over in the Lake Clark area, that's exactly what he did. He literally carried, hand carried buckets of gravel from the lake shore up to his cabin spot and slowly built up a little pad there for his cabin to sit on. And that cabin's still standing to this day. It's about a 50 year old cabin. If you're going to build a heated structure like our little cabin or any any heated structure, then you're, you're better off to leave that above the ground on pier foundation. You want air to circulate under the cabin to help, remember the strategy is to keep the ground frozen. And if you put a structure on the ground that's heated, that heat's going to permeate into the soil and eventually it's going to thaw out your, uh, your permafrost and cause your cabin to slump and lean and uh, crack and all kinds of weird stuff. So. Let air flow under it. Uh, it's a good idea to underpin or skirt the cabin with something just to keep, uh, you know, animals and debris out of there. Very important if a fire comes through that you you want a barrier. You don't want embers to blow up underneath your your structure and set it on fire. So skirt it, but skirt it in such a way with some kind of mesh or make openings so that air can circulate through there. Remember, the, the idea is to keep it frozen. The second uh, strategy that people use, what the old timers used to do to develop a big homestead is they would bulldoze the property, let it thaw, and then stay off of it for a couple, three, four years until the property dries out. So you bring in a dozer in the winter time because if you start dozing the vegetation in the summertime, you're going to end up with a muck pit and you, you can literally sink a dozer in it. So bring in a dozer in the winter time peel the moss and the vegetation, just push it into piles and uh, and then stay off the property uh, until it dries out. It's going to be, it's going to take two or three years before that actually dries out. So our, our plan, once we get the cabin livable and we can spend more time there, then we're going to start taking one or two acre plots and harvest the, the timber because we have a lot of usable spruce timber and firewood on the uh, property. So we're going to harvest it and then we're going to bring in a dozer and, and peel the vegetation off one or two acres at a time. That way, you know, we still have plenty of property to play with and, and those two acres or whatever, they can sit there until they dry out. You can still mess around with it. On, in, the, in the wintertime, it's frozen, so there's no big, no big muck pit there. But in the summer, it, it'll be a, a big muddy, s slick pit for at least a couple years. It's the long-term solution. If you want to grow a big field of crops, that's probably the best way to do it or have a pasture or something 
is is just to go ahead and thaw the property out, dry the property out, and then you've got some good usable soil. Uh, the other strategy is to, uh, and this goes with both with both methods there, is you've got to drain it. The water has to go somewhere, and if you've got a fairly flat piece of property, you might need to dig some ditches. They can be small ditches. Uh, it's mostly seasonal rainfall and snowfall that you're trying to get rid of, but uh, in our case, there's a lake across the road, and it's a state-maintained road, and they're not really good about keeping the uh, culverts cleared that go under the road. So, um, you know, if I can get them to drain the, or to clean those culverts out, and then we create some ditches, might have to put in a culvert or two on our property to go under our driveway and stuff. But uh, you know, you just want to help Mother Nature get the water where it wants to go. So to recap, you can either keep it frozen thaw it out and dry it out and in both cases drain it last year was we had to bring in some more gravel every summer it's a struggle to get gravel but we just really pushed last summer to bring in uh, we brought in 35 dump truck loads full of gravel and spread it with a dozer to create a uh, you know a good stable parking pad where our swamp is was uh, and we also put uh, another we extended the gravel pad around our cabin 12 feet all the way around it 12 more feet uh, I just wanted to, to again the strategy is to try to insulate the ground and keep it frozen that keeps things from from moving around permafrost is actually very stable if you keep it frozen so we brought in this gravel at a, at a huge cost it was about eight thousand dollars just for last summer's gravel so as you can tell it's an expensive endeavor to uh, to, to deal with this it would have been a lot, had I known back when we bought it, it would have been a lot smarter to buy some well-drained soil with a little more slope to it just to help get rid of the water. By all means, leave some areas native because it's a lot easier to take care of. It brings the wildlife in. Trying to do lawns and artificial plantings, it's, it's just too much work. Uh, Alaska, uh, the plants that grow here, grow here because they can. They've evolved over millions of years to tolerate the, the conditions we have. So why fight it? So keep some areas, uh, as much of it as you can, in native vegetation. So hopefully we've given you some tips on how to deal with boggy land if you end up with some in the north part of the world. And permafrost, a little bit about how to deal with permafrost. There's a lot more to it than I've gotten into here. So if you got something out of this, please give us a thumbs up. And also don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I want to thank all of you that have subscribed. Feel free to scroll down to the comment section and hit me up with any questions or suggestions or comments that you might have. That, that kind of helps keep me motivated. So, take care of yourselves, take care of somebody else, and thanks for hanging out in far out Alaska. <laughs>